to Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation. Well, not a whole lot of nights left like this. Some leaves still remain in the trees as playoff positioning has certainly now begun. Week 8 of Fox 12's Friday Night Lights, meaning this is the penultimate weekend of high school football regular season. Our big game as big as it gets in the Evergreen State. Fox 12's Craig Burnback live from Vancouver and Kiggins Bowl. Battleground entered the night as one of the last four unbeatens in WIAA 4A football, Craig. Skyview, of course, a bone to pick after watching their perfect season blow away at Camas last week. Uh, Craig, the Tigers have waited 18 years for a win over the storm. How about tonight? Well, Nick, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that Battleground's going to have to wait at least one more year to end this losing streak. Because really the only thing that went wrong for Skyview tonight was a few minutes before kickoff, the lights went out here at Kiggins Bowl. But once they came back on, Skyview lit up the scoreboard. The lights went out for a bit just before the kickoff of this one, but you know, sometimes it's the darkest before the storm. Yep, the Skyview Storm are raining down touchdowns tonight. In the first half, Jake Kennedy and Riley Artis were hooking up. That's touchdown number one. And then it's the bomb as Artis is going to take Kennedy's pass and he's going to get, 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 get gone to the house. Battleground managed to find the end zone just once tonight. Jacob Champagne on courts this touchdown run, but it was 21 to 7 storm at the half. Trey Jacobs not tall, but he plays huge. What a tough run. He gets in and it's 28 to 10. And that was plenty of O. So how about some D? Well, that's Caden Hamlin with the INT as Skyview beats Battleground. 49-10 is your final. It just feels great to bounce back, man. We we got to go big or go home from here on now, and everybody knows that, so we're here to play. Uh, you and Jake had a, uh, quite a connection in that first half. Three touchdowns. Have you ever done that in a half? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, I don't really keep track, but it's definitely the first time. It's definitely. What a night for that young man. Now, as for Skyview next week, they're right back here at Kiggins Bowl as they're going to host Union. As for the Battleground Tigers, they've got another huge test next week as they're back home to host the Red Hot Camas Papermakers. Live from Kiggins Bowl in Vancouver, Washington, Craig Burnback, Friday Night Lights. Hey, we're live. Cue the leaf blowers. Rivalry day from McKenzie Stadium. Camas had won four straight against their rivals from Union. They made 13 straight against Skyview a week ago. Titans out to snap the skid and keep their playoff hopes afloat. Second play of the game, though, Papermakers printing those big plays. On the 14, Jake Davidson, Anthony Forner, the crosser, the reacher, and get along and gone. 86-yard opening salvo there. Not three minutes later, the U had the reply on a delayed handoff. It's Alex Olsen here, sticks a foot in the ground and pounds it up and in. Three-yard score, Titans with limited resistance there. Game tied at seven. Still second, pendulum swinging back to Camus. Davidson screen pass, Alex Horoa. Well, the sophomore daydreaming about that one in home act, huh? Pick up the blocks, dish it in for 22 yards, 14-7. Camus on offense now in the second quarter. How about twist on things here? Reed Tennant escaping down at the five. The next play gets in. No spin needed, 21-7. 52-27 the final. Camus will go to battleground now for week nine from District Stadium. We will be there. Titans wait the storm Friday at 5 o'clock from Kiggins. We will have cameras rolling in both locations. Another trifecta of crucial contest in that Three Rivers League back in Oregon. Five of the six schools ranked in the top ten. Six and one Lakeridge at number six. Seven and a Westland, number one, of course, the reigning champs. A pink out in the den, and they were electrified in a hurry. Ryan Vandenbrink trots home. 78-yard drive. The Beaver baseball commit makes it seven to nothing. Next Westland drive, next Westland score. Baird Gilroy has been a junior stud for them. And front of the eight of dudes like this from Gus Donnerberg, Gus the bus, driving to college for the Idaho Vandals, first chasing down a back-to-back -back state title. John Eagles got stars all across the board. Caden McDonald, just another senior stud at cornerback, the pick to get the ball back. That would lead to this play. Cade Johnson, a senior tailback, flashing those tail lights into the cool night air, 24 yards. 45-3 at half, 52-10 the final. Lions remain home for senior night with Oregon City in the battle for the bridge. Pacers will be at LO for the battle of the lake. Homecoming at Oregon City from Pioneer Memorial Stadium. 6-1, 12s, and ranked third. Fire them up, 5-2 OC, 10th 
from the coaches' pole. That Three Rivers League is grinding as it gets on the Oregon Trail. Pioneers trying to come back in the second half. Down 26 0. Benjamin Schneider, Thomas Borden have been doing this for years. Junior to senior, five yard touchdown. It's 26 7 in favor of Tualatin. And you know that Jaden Fortier is a D1 talent committed to the Sun Devils in Tempe. Forks up on his stock. Nobody's stopping him. 33 to 7. They play defense out there too. Number two. How do you do? Thomas Goure. Goodness gracious. Fumble recovered by Tanner Dunn. Then it would be Carson Mullins. Oh, he's going to get her done out there in the fog rolling in. Here comes October, huh? Just a bunch of blue collar guys. 20 down yards to the far corner. 46 to 30. To Walton now. Seven wins will face cross town rival Tigard. That their place as the Pios and Lions await across the bridge. FNL, Cobb Field, Lake Oswego. Senior night for the fifth ranked Lakers. One and two. The TRL Tigard 0 for three. No week ever easy in that league. Third quarter, Lake show up 7 0, but not so fast break my friend Tigers put on the short field and Jake Feist to Trevin Laird 35 yard gain to the three three plays later it's Christian Warner their first score it's seven to seven new game we got a new lead Liam Davis the lefty resounding response on fourth and six Matt Lane staying in his 24 yards 14 7 LO fourth quarter third and long Feist into the air on a busted play and Anna LeBaron, a pick that will play. Far side and gain to the 40. Thwarts the chance. Flip side of the field on fourth and goal. The QB keep behind the block. Tigers, though, keep him out of the end zone. A turnover on down. 16-7 now after a safety. Eight minutes to go, and look who it be. Lamarck Gispel pulls up the anchor. The sensational sophomore rings him up. 35 yards on first down, 23-7. They would continue to roll, but Feist and Laird with the scuba score, a deep six and heavy coverage from 65. And what a route, what a stiff arm. 23-13, how it would end. Lakers will now aim to tame those Pacers from Lake Ridge. Tigers senior night with 12. It'll be a wild one starting at 7 o'clock. And who's best in the city of roses? Well, Fox Souls Paulina Aguilar live in St. John's. Paulina Wells hadn't won a slice of the PIL since 2012, while Roosevelt last earned a piece of the Portland prize a season ago. The winner tonight, though, clinching at least a share of that crown. Paulina? Well, Nick, after 11 years, the Guardians have broken the spell. Now, all season, they've been averaging about 40 points, and tonight, they were just a few points shy of that. But nonetheless, they protect their undefeated season in the league. It's senior night for the Rough Riders, but it didn't go as planned. 0-0 in the first. Spencer Reed with the handoff to Wyatt Andler. Finds a rabbit hole and gets through the first touchdown of the game along with a two-point conversion, and it is 8 to nothing. The Riders, Kalen Riley with a handoff to Dontrell Betts. He cuts right and gets one Guardian off of him for 18 yards. Still in the second, and the Guardians begin to show off. Reed steps back, takes a slip, but able to stay on his feet. Scrambles, cuts left, chucks it for a Hail Mary with zero on the clock. In the air, but tips off the fingers of a Guardian, but falls into the hands of Jackson Poole. He juggles it, but he takes it home, and they'll sprinkle it with another two-point conversion for an 18 to nothing at the half. What a play. To the third quarter, Reed again to Poole, who pushes the pile past that goal line for another eight points, and now it's 26-0. Still in the third, and the dynamic duo strikes again. Poole with the ball, he goes down, but not before he extends over that goal line for 34-0. to The Riders is able to get one on the board in that fourth quarter to avoid a shutout. 36-8 is your final. First of all, congratulations on your win tonight. What Thank was you. working for you guys? Really, it was just our run. Like it's so, so unstoppable. Our, our O line just really powers through, and uh, we have Wyatt Andler at, at our fullback, and he just he can fight for every yard that we get. Hey, I want to talk about that Hail Mary and that catch that you had. <laughs> I mean, tell me about that. I was nervous for a second there. I was, I was, I was worried. The quarterback was supposed to roll to the right. I, I saw the play, and he rolled to the left, and I was like, oh man. And then he just hucked it deep, and it was just a tip drill. I thought I was going to drop it, but got in at the end. It was a beautiful play to watch live, but with the win tonight, they will have a shot at that league title. But at minimum, they will at least be co-champs. They will play Franklin next week. Reporting in St. John's, Paulina Aguilar, Friday Night Lights. Nick.
Yeah, flannel and the wing tee always in fashion. While Central Catholic has cinched up the Mount Hood Conference crown, Sandy took to Happy Valley to battle the Nelson Hawks for second in the standings. Adrian C, season three on the 24. Avery Durdahl goes left to Jackson Larson. Flex eight yards to the 16, move the chains. And full snaps later, they're on the 12. The struggle, though, real. A goal on interception by Sandy's Caleb Bernard. 100 yards the other way to glory. The other way, well, as we get to midfield. Nice pick, though. Later first, still scoreless. Cole Rodzin. They gave him the number 99. He's a wild thing. The senior running back and linebacker logs on 15 yards down to the four. Three plays after that, more from Bernard. Cut it back and get in. Four-yard touchdown. Pioneer strike first. That would be the halftime score. 28-13 the final. Hawks next swoop. Two. Gresham go for hold. That would be Nelson winning. Pioneers no head home for Barlow up the trail from Thursday. And who you got in the capital city? North Salem, West Salem, bragging rights, and more importantly, the Viking and Titans both three and two in that 6A special district one. By the time Gino rolled up there, the running clock may as well have been ticking. Carson Evanson, though still playing. TD Rush, West Salem up 42 to nothing, and a night where they just smothered on both sides of the ball. Damari Hall, you can make the call. You can pick that ball. Door number zero is in points allowed. 42 nothing, Titans. They'll now drive down to Eugene to face Sheldon. North head south to the home of the unbeaten Saxons. We will be there. 5A conference title night in the Mid Valley. Number two Silverton, 7 0. Home Sandy West Albany, 6 1, ranked six. Bulldogs won this battle 21 20 last October. Not as tight tonight. Sawyer Tini, just a junior, feels like eons. He's been right in the script for the Foxes. A bouncy move to make space, and the quarterback gets in from 19. They get two and an 8 0 lead. Bulldogs always got bite, especially on their home grass. Another quarterback keeper. Lucas Hughes, no Huey, just news. 19 yards score were tied. Two sides would then swap turnovers before Silverton extended its reach. Team to the tight end. Brody Coenzi talking about a reach. 24 yard score to get in. It's 14 7. Anything you can do, I can do about equally as good. Hughes, Austin Simons. Yeah, Simons gets in. It's 14 14, a 13 yard score. But then the Fox has really swiped it all night long. 49 28 to clinch that mid Willamette Conference crown. Silverton closes up the regular season for senior night with Lebanon. Bulldogs going over to McKay. Fox 12 from Harefield, 5A regular season finale for the Southridge Skyhawks. Hill High awaits the 5A playoff seedings. You know, the Spartans were in full charge. A pick on the first play to set up a goal line play to the lineman. Hill High's mini fridge, Cody Stubbs. Perfect name for this play. That's the official ruling days in the beauty, what we just saw there. Thumbs up, hands in the air. Big guy touchdown. Let him know. 7 0 for the blue shirts. Meantime, HHS got a senior power back, and my goodness, is he ever alone? We've seen him for so many years as well. Preston Itchaveria, heavy load. 33 looks so good on him. Prototype big time junk yard plays, 62 yard run, the three. Preston would soon press on, press forward, get in for the quick two score lead. And Dan Chef's boys packed the heat on the defensive line to Asante Mims with the sack. They get a double nickel carry into the winning weekend. The 16-team 5A playoff bracket begins November 3rd. The league playoffs next week. Sparty believes it'll host Hood River Valley on Thursday. Wow. Still to come, more from our Craig Birdback on the cheer of the night from Kiggins Bowl and Paulina on senior night to Saber in St. John's on a long fight back for one tough rough rider. But first, our high school spotlight will take the oath in Kaiser. From chief to coach, all around good guy, community leader, that's when week eight of Friday Night Lights returns right here on Fox 12. You're watching Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation.